on the line is Anne Widdicombe, former Minister of State for Prisons and, of course, a Brexit Party MEP colleague of mine in more optimistic days just a few years ago. And uh, prison breaks like this are relatively rare these days, aren't they? Well, there's always a certain level uh, of prison breakouts. But what's odd about this is, look, Wandsworth is a remand prison, but it's most certainly not an open prison. I mean, it's secure. Uh, and therefore, uh, as a matter of routine, if vehicles are coming in and out, uh, mirrors are, are held underneath the vehicles. I mean, both ways. Uh, and, uh, you know, vehicles are normally searched uh, on leaving. They're searched for things like drugs. Uh, and I do not understand. I mean, if this story is true, that he got out clinging to the underside of a car or vehicle, which is the you know, standard escape method. You see it in every prisoner of war film that you ever yeah. see. You know, yeah. find it. It's so standard. It's so basic. It's so easy to counter. I don't understand it if it's true. No. Well, and we'll find out more, but it does sound as though it is true and a remarkable breach of security. Now, Anne, we have an Albanian criminal... He smuggled a stone of cocaine into the United Kingdom. He's laundered approximately a third of a million pounds. And he's currently being held in a prison in Germany. And the British government have gone for an extradition. But a German court, a big German court, using rules from our old friend, the European Convention on Human Rights, have said that he can't come to the UK because our prisons aren't up to standard. It sounds astonishing. Please, can you tell us what on earth is going on? Well, I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're talking through their hats, quite honestly. I mean, it, to say that our prisons you know, aren't capable uh, of housing serious criminals, of course they are. Uh, and of course, you know, prisoners are fed, prisoners have access to medicine. But I mean, it is perfectly true that with the overcrowding levels that there are at the moment, the regimes, which I can't believe this guy would be remotely interested in, the regimes of training and education and, and those sorts of things, they get squeezed. They get squeezed because the more prisoners you have, the more prison officers have to deal with security rather than dealing with those sorts yeah. of things. Uh, and very often the first casualty of overcrowding is actually the rehabilitation regimes. So that is poor. But I can't believe an Albanian drug smuggler, uh, you know, is absolutely dying uh, to do his NVQ in something or other. You know, it's most unlikely. So uh, I, I think the German courts are, are making a rather pathetic and very silly point. Very silly point. And yet German judges, Anne, are using ECHR not to deport a foreign criminal in much the same way we could argue that British judges interpret ECHR so that we can't deport foreign criminals. It took us 10 years to get rid of Abu Qatada. Doesn't it illustrate once again just how ludicrous this well-intentioned convention that came into force 70 years ago last week is? I mean, it was never designed to cope with what we're coping with today any more than was the 1951 Convention on Refugees. It was yeah. designed to deal with the appalling circumstances that we had encountered uh, after the Second World War, uh, during the Second World War, before it and immediately after it. It was those appalling circumstances that they were trying to counter, not modern day circumstances. And so, frankly, ECHR isn't fit for purpose. Uh, it's why we can't send prisoners to Rwanda. I mean, Rwanda's uh, asylum seekers to Rwanda. Rwanda is perfectly acceptable uh, as an offshore processing centre. Uh, and it's it's why, uh, as you rightly say, we're limited in what we can do with criminals. Now, the answer is to come out of ECHR. It's not to abandon all human rights, God forbid, but it's to have our own Bill of Rights, which is proportionate and sensible and limited, and ditch ECHR. Not so easy because of various treaty obligations, but could be done if only we had a government that was determined to do it. Is this a bit like Brexit round two? This whole question of a court uh, that has completely outlived the usefulness of its original intention, rather like the trade deal that we were sold back in the common market days had become a political union. Do you think the British public are ready for this? I think they're ready for us to come out of ECHR. 
um, because I think gradually, just through stories like this, it's gradually infiltrating the public consciousness that this institution isn't working the way that it was designed to work when it was very first set up. And things yeah. do become redundant over the years. Things that were desperately necessary uh, when they were created do become redundant. And I'm afraid that that is what has happened with ECHR. Now, there is a choice. Either it itself reforms uh, and looks to a different brief, or we come out and we institute our own brief. Well, Anne Whittacombe, as ever, plenty of clarity there. Thank you for joining us again on the show.